at our house and then potentially at another facility, um, a licensed kitchen. We are both uh, experienced chefs. Um, so we know that there's been some issues about uh, our residential road and things like that, but we're just trying to get it past that we can start making things at our house and having uh, the community um, come and pick up some products that we make, pastas, um, and then have delivering them as well to the community and other communities around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can't hear him. <laughs> I think that was someone else, Annie. Oh, really? I, his mouth is moving. Yeah, there's a number ending in 6389, I think, that keeps cutting in. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's just basically some You can't hear me. Can you guys still hear me? We can't oh. hear you. We I don't know why, Sarah. Joe. Your voice is not coming across. Sarah's is. I, I'm not going to make any comments on that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So yeah, basically, for the time being, we just want to start off small and do things like um, spaghettis and <laughs> parpadel and things like that, or have other requests. Nothing with a filling, nothing that would require meat or um, dairy products, just a simple pasta with eggs, flour. Um, and we have packaging and we're working on labels to make our business grow. But right now we're just starting off small because we do both have jobs. Um, so it's just something that we love to do on our own time. And we just wanted to see where we could go and potentially make this into something bigger. And then down the line, have a brick and mortar storefront, not in Newton or at our house, but just, this is just something that we've been thinking about and working on for quite some time. And we just wanna do it right and, and get all the licensing and everything that we need to get it done in the right way. Okay, maybe you can have that brick and mortar in Newton. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry, it's Larry. Okay. Uh, hey guys, Sarah and uh, was it Joe? You guys, did you apply to the state? Do you have to have any inspection of your kitchen at your house? We have contacted the state. We have not heard back from them yet. We contacted them um, a, about a week and a half ago, and we haven't heard anything back yet. Larry, okay, let it happen. All right, uh, let's, uh, I like to keep things in somewhat order for uh, Jennifer, if you could uh, say any of your uh, remarks on your review of the project, please. Sure, um, just real quick to Larry, there actually, I do not believe will be licensing requirements for that small of a production, um, but you certainly should hear back from the state at some point. Um, regarding my review, so they applied for a conditional use permit as a home-based business. This certainly, um, generally does qualify as a home-based business. The one item that gave me pause is that within your home-based business requirements, you're not allowed to create or display any evidence of the business outside of the home. And the proposal is to have a freezer and an ability to pay outside. I, I understand the logistics being proposed, but that is evidence of the business outside the home or at least that is something the board needs to discuss whether you do think that that disqualifies it as a home-based business. If you do think it disqualifies it as a home-based business, then they would actually need a variance and a site plan because they're in a residential district. If you think that the freezer chest does not constitute it being outside the home, then I do think it qualifies everything else as a home-based business. Um, my only recommendations in that case are that you have the freezer location indicated on the sketch that they've provided um, of their property. And also you may want to discuss screening the freezer or the um, refrigerator from any view from the road or from any abutting properties. Jen, question? What would be the difference between what they're trying to do 
and the person selling eggs in a cooler with a sign on it. Under that, that would fall under agriculture. Which it, there is, there are different state laws that would apply to that. Um, this is under Newton's regulations, a home-based business that they are applying for, and you don't allow the outside, um, right? Anything outside the home other than that two-foot sign. So that's true. This is Barbara, and we have um, we have strongly uh, told told other people who have come before the board for home-based businesses that they could not have any outdoor um, showing that of the business at all. That's always been the case because of the, the, um, the, the rules. Yeah, I mean, I will say that, you know, people are allowed to have freezers out on their porches as a residential use. That, that isn't necessarily out of characteristic. So this is really a judgment call on the board's part, whether you think it makes it disqualified or not. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna, uh, right now we'd normally be voting whether this is a complete application and accepting it. I'm gonna throw a quick question back to the applicant. Um, having heard the concern about the freezer on the porch, do you see any way that you could modify your request at this time? Um, we've talked about a couple of different things. Um, people placing orders and then they could all, always pick it up. Um, but then that just is a problem with like face-to-face -face, like contact right now with COVID and everything. I understand a lot of people aren't comfortable with that. But then we've also discussed like setting a day of the week um, and going and like delivering the products ourselves. Um, it wasn't always like necessarily going to be a freezer, but the, I mean, I guess a mini refrigerator would be the same thing. Like if we had it on our front porch for people to be able to grab it um, on their own time. Um, but whatever, if we have, if there's any other recommendations you could have for us to do, that would be great. But we've, we've talked about doing a couple of different things and we're just trying to figure out the best thing that works for, for you and the community and for us. Okay. Um, the issue with the ordinance, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly clear. I know there's some judgment in there. I was just trying to get if you have any other ideas that wouldn't be having anything that's visible other than the, a small sign um, outside of the home. Um, I don't think there would be anything other visible things. My plan of marketing was mostly going to be um, social media and like word to mouth. Um, so a sign outside would be fine. And then if we were allowed to put the mini fridge on our front porch, that would be great. If not, we can go a different route. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I um, ask a quick question to Sarah and Joe? Yes, please. Sarah and Joe, could you put the fridge in your, um, your garage? I see that that is underneath in, in the basement. Yeah, we absolutely could. That just, we would just have to be home for somebody to obviously come by and go into the garage um, and pick up their things, which we have no problem with. Um, but it would just have to be set up a date and time for people to come and grab goods because obviously we're not just going to leave our garage door open. Okay, I would, um, I think we got from uh, Ms. Rowden that. She believes this is a complete application. Um, can I have a motion? Do I hear a motion or any other comments on the completeness and taking jurisdiction? Mike? Yes. Fish McCartney has her hand up. Okay. Uh, but first we should take jurisdiction, right? Yeah, I don't really want to open up to the public yet. Uh, this is Annie. I'll make a motion that we uh, take jurisdiction. Second. Okay, thank you. Annie, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Can Mr. I add Doggett. something? Sure, I think this is the applicant. It is, this is Sarah. Okay. Um, okay. What about putting the mini, the freezer or fridge on the back porch where it wasn't like visible to the road? Does that matter or no? That, uh, because as Ms. Uh, Rowden mentioned, there's uh, some discretion here um, that, might be a suitable possibility. Um, okay, I just wanted it to be 
an option yeah. just so you know that okay. we do have a front and a back right we will we'll be discussing this uh more with your with your input so uh mr doggett i believe we have a motion and a second um can you call the vote please and maybe read the vote just to remind people Jim, are you there? Hmm. <laughs> she is still there. Sorry about that. I was muted. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Andrews, uh, by the way, the motion is on the motion of Annie Colli Ms. Collier to accept the application as being complete and take jurisdiction. Mr. Foote seconded the motion. Mm. Mr. Okay. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoy. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zelinsky. Aye. That is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, at this point, I would like to open it up to the public for any comments. Ms. McCarthy has her hand raised. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I'm not here as the public. I'm here as Conservation Commission and a, the road agent asked me to sit in in place of him. He was tied up today. And he has concerns about pickup um, on this dirt road, scenic road and the amount of traffic and now maintenance that this is gonna incur for him. So he's requesting that you consider that, uh, especially where pickup is going to mean there's more traffic on that road. It, it, he's extremely concerned and sorry that he couldn't be here tonight and asked me to speak for him. Conservation has the same concern of a scenic road with wetlands on both sides. And a, a lot of traffic is now going to force uh, residue from the road into the wetlands. So I needed to state my case. Uh, for him and for conservation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that saves me from reading uh, kind of the Conservation Commission's uh, yes. concern uh, later on. I appreciate that and that it was also from the, from the road agent. Uh, are there any other members of the public that would like to speak? Having none, uh, I would like to open it up to the board for discussion. questions mike this is barbara i just okay. would like to re i would just like to remind the applicant that according to the ordinance um the any solid waste that they have has to be uh, contracted with another company for them to they can dispose of the they are not supposed to use the um, transfer station for the home-based business refuse Okay. This is Dennis Moran. Um, in an effort to alleviate some of the concerns of the road agent and the conservation commission, how do you feel about potentially suggesting people that come pick up your product coming off of Dugway Road versus 108? Versus like Maple Ave, um, just to reduce the, the length of dirt road that has traveled on Curryville Road. Are you asking the applicant that? Yes, just to, is it a possibility to suggest to, you know, as a pre preferred route? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are like a quarter of a mile um, from, like you said, Dugway, and then it's obviously longer to 108. So we can, of course, um, tell people if they're coming to try to come from that side of town um, rather than coming down the whole road. That's something we could definitely do. I don't foresee it being like a ton of cars every single day, all day long. Like I said, we both have full-time jobs, so it would only be something very minimal. Um, and 
we were planning on choosing a day on our off days to, you know, go and make deliveries on our own to kind of reduce the traffic and just get it all done in one shot so that we can plan our, our um, work at a timely fashion as well. Cause we're not going to have time to make it every single day so that people aren't gonna be able to come pick it up every single day because we want it to be as fresh as possible. So there's going to be certain time frames and days of the week that will be possible. Thank you. This, this is, this is Joe again. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I do now. Yes. yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think we definitely want to uh, do a lot more of the deliveries ourselves because we want to make it face to face. We want to get to know some of these people. We want, you know, we want to, as many interactions as possible. That's kind of the biggest thing to us because we're fairly new here. We're, we're less than two years in and like the camaraderie between, between this town is, is pretty amazing. And we kind of want to, open that up to whether it be Merrimack and Amesbury and, and eventually Newburyport. Um, but that's kind of the biggest goal is, is just to more make it a face-to-face -face delivery. Okay. Any other comments, uh, questions from the board? This is Annie. Um, I'm just wondering if there's some way to reasonably limit you know uh, days or times or access for pickup and to and to make it more of a delivery um where the pickup is more of an exception to the rule um i'm not sure that there's a way to do that but you know just just trying to think if, if the applicant can come up with any ideas or i mean the road agents concerns are certainly valid. We don't want to have, you know, 50, 50 cars a day if you grow big <laughs> coming in there. Sorry, Joe, again. Uh, if we get 50 cars a day, that is a great goal. But at that point, we're going to have a storefront because we're not going to be able to handle <laughs> that in a full-time job. Our full-time job is going to be the backup plan at that point. And our full-time plan is the store. And that is our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal, if we get eight to 10 people on at the beginning, whether it's the first six months, to me, that's that's an accomplishment, and and that's that's minimal. If it starts growing, then we need to start considering the next plan for us for ourselves. So you're saying eight to ten people over what period of time? Whether it be one to two months, I'm I'm hoping you know we get a little bit of a boost at the beginning, but I'm, I'm not banking on it. I, I know these things are are it's going to take time to to grow and be really quick to social media and hopefully the town and word gets around and quality is not hitting. I mean, by Mother's Day, I'm hoping we'll, we'll have, you know, in one week, 10 guests and customers. If that, if that answers some of your questions. Um, Mike, just ahead, a Jeff. comment for the whole board and for the applicant is that if they started getting 50 cars a day, they would no longer qualify as a home-based business. That is not a typical residential use. It no longer would be an accessory to the, if they're getting to that point, it truly would become a retail operation. So they would be out of the bounds effectively of your ordinance. Right. And so, I know that that's not a line in the sand. It's not, there's not a definitive point when you reach that, but when it gets there, you'll know it. If it ever becomes that big of a problem. I was going to say, Jen, what is the, what's the trigger for that? There honestly isn't. It's really, there is a, a level of, is it 40 cars or 50 cars? I can't tell you that. But if it becomes that it is no longer a accessory use to the primary residential use, it no longer qualifies as a home-based business. And the planning board could address it by rescinding the approval. Code enforcement could also go after it as being outside of the bounds of your zoning ordinance. I know no one wants to get there. That's clearly not how you should be approving it, but if it really did become a problem, there are ways to address it, is what I'm saying. Hey, Jen, uh, Ms. Rowden, just for my clarification, this is Mike. Um, would it be better if we were to go forward with this to have as a condition of approval, should we reach that point on a maximum number of visits per day in say in the 10 to 15 to 20 or something like that? 
with that, you could I worry you about could, what is enforceable. You could certainly put that in as a condition if you wanted to. It would be hard to enforce, but if it did get past that point, that would give you a clear number if that makes the board more comfortable. Okay. But I would suggest it as a number of trips over the course of a week, just so that, you know, if Saturday's their delivery day, that you're not beholden to 10 customers versus 11. Okay, that's a good idea. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I uh, just want to remind the board that you do have the right to set um, times of hours of operation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, my feeling right now, and I'd like input from the rest of the board, is uh, this stuff is, we, I think it's surmountable. Um, we have two main issues that are somewhat sticking points, is the impact on the road, and that comes down to visits and possibly hours, um, and then the impact on the initial environment the immediate environment, meaning what the ordinance says, not anything visible outside of the home, that tends to be the freezer issue right now. Um, I'm open for discussions, ideas on how we can, uh, how we could address those, or how the applicant can address those with suggestions. I believe this is Annie. I believe that um, Jen said in her written comments um, the possibility of some sort of a screen of the mm -hmm. um, refrigerator. Um, it would seem to me if it were on the back porch with some sort of behind some sort of a screen that you know that might make it not so visible. Okay, so could that be um, stated as a condition of? Freezer is not visible from the from Caribbean Road. Yeah. Okay. It, this is Barbara. That that sounds like that would uh, could satisfy that. Okay. And then um, road impact. I like Jen's idea of having it on a a weekly. Um, and it could be average per day over the week. So you're not getting penalized from a good Saturday or Sunday. Uh, this is back to the applicant. Uh, what would your best highest dream be um, in your first year of number of visits per week? Um, I mean, progressing forward, obviously starting off slow, if we could have like 30 to 40 orders a week by um, a year's time at the end of, you know, a fiscal year, then that would be great. But then like Joe had mentioned, and that's something with us moving forward and talking about getting um, a brick and mortar, our own storefront, um, we always wanted to go in that direction first. But just with COVID and everything right now, we just didn't think it was in our best interest to kind of jump the gun and, you know, go right into it. So we just wanted to, that's why we want to do it out of our house first and just start small to see what it, it could grow into and see what business we could make and what relations we could make. Um, we're not trying to, you know, like have a, a store here and, and traffic coming in and out and doing it like that because then that would be us quitting our jobs but then we would want to make it something bigger not on our property okay so if a suggestion was made um some to the effect of no more than an average of 15 visits per day maximum 100 per week would that work yeah for you? I mean, even that would be pushing it um, cause like I said, it wouldn't be every single day because we do have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. So it would be only a couple of days a week what people would come and pick things up. So if we chose two or three days out of the week and had 20 mm -hmm. to 30, um, orders in those days, 
then that would probably be the max. But if we had a lot, then we would also, you know, have a day where we would go and deliver ourselves. So it would reduce that. And then we could go outside of Newton and, and grow our clientele. Okay. Thank you. Well, I really would like to make it, uh, you know, a stipulation that when you do your brick and mortar that you stay in Newton, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Excuse can me. I get the uh, Mike? Anymore? There was a question on what size freezer that they were going to what they were considering. Okay. And to the applicant, do you have a uh, an idea on that size of freezer? Uh, our freezer right now is, is only uh, yeah, here. Our freezer right now is only uh, about two and a half feet, three feet max. Two feet wide, oh, okay. two feet deep. It's tiny right now. Okay. But can I make a suggestion that maybe, obviously, the putting it in the back is fine, but it be limited to one? To one freezer? Would... Yeah. That that's that makes sense. I don't want to have a twelve of them back there because then it's a bad. <laughs> I guess not, but. <laughs> okay, uh, if there's no more questions from the board, um, I'd like to, I'm opening up for a motion for this. I have, I have four items. For possible conditions. Possible conditions. Okay, go ahead and uh, read what you have right now. Obtain all local and state land use permits. Limit daily customers to an average of 15 max of, and I apologize, I did not get that number, per week. I, I put down 100 per week, uh, hoping for other comment from the, from the board or the public. Um, the outdoor refrigeration not visible from Curryville Road and limited to one refrigeration unit. Okay. I chose refrigeration unit versus freezer because there seemed to be some people were talking about freezers versus refrigerators. Okay. I believe refrigeration unit may cover both or you can just do refrigerator slash freezer units. Well, this is Annie. I'd like to make a motion to approve with those four conditions. This is a second. second. Okay, Who's, we have a motion and a second. Uh, who seconded? Larry. Larry. Um, just that we had a discussion. Uh, Jim, did I miss it or were there in there the, um, uh, the amount of visits per week? We had the 15 to 100. Uh, the other thing I would like to address is um, hours. I don't think uh, the residents of Curry Road would like to have people coming by at 2 a.m. So mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, judicious to have um, hours that people could come by uh, to, to be picking up. And I'll throw that back out as a question for the applicant. Um, I'd always like to hear from you first on what hours would work for you. Definitely 2 a.m. Is not, is not okay over here either. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Eight to six or eight to eight. Okay. Um, this is Annie. I'd like to make the motion include hours of operation eight to six p.m. I'll second the amendment. Okay, so we have a vote and a second and an amendment, um, any other discussion from the board? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Doggett, can you call the votes? Vote. Mr. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Lavoy? Aye. Mr. Call, sorry, Ms. Collier? Aye. Mr. Foote? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. Mr. Zielinski? Aye.
that is unanimous. Okay. Well, my, uh, thank you to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Garino. And I just want to be. emphasize. Soon to be. Soon to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, oh, Not Russia. I'm with it. I'm just you know, getting used to being called that thing. I just want to emphasize that uh, the permitting is very important, even though this was an approval, you still must get the approvals and all that, or you will be um, probably getting a nasty letter from nasty letter from code enforcement or something, but I'm sure that he will be more than willing to work with you. Okay, sounds good. Okay. First, first round's on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Italian. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to close uh, the public hearing on the uh, on that case and then move on to the third and actually the third and fourth item on the agenda kind of um, work. They're, the, they're basically it's one hearing and Jen sent a very good letter on that. Um, I'm going to actually ask Jen to speak first on these. I will read to make it uh, legal. The first one is Kelly McCarthy and Stocker Realty Trust of Newton, New Hampshire request a public hearing on a for a lot line adjustment between 45 Highland Street and Backland between Highland Street and Pond Street, Newton, New Hampshire. The properties are referenced as tax map five, block four, lots 18.2 and 19.2. And then item four, which we're going to hear essentially at the same time, Robert and Pamela Hollick and Stocker Realty Trust of Newton, New Hampshire request a public hearing for a lot line adjustment between 52 Pond Street and Backland between Highland Street and Pond Street, Newton, New Hampshire. The properties are referenced as Tax Mac 5, Block 4, Lots 2, and 19.2. Okay. And uh, Jen, could you, I'm going to have you speak first on this, please, just because I think that really clears up a lot for everybody. Sure. Um, so these two lot line adjustments involve three parcels. Um, lot 5, 4, 18, 2, 5, 4, 19, 2, and 5, 4, 2. Through the two-step process that this really would be, even though they are two legally separate applications, um, if they are done at the same time, I think that they are complete and jurisdiction should be taken. If they are done separately and if they were to be recorded separately, then lot 54192 would actually end up as an illegal lot because it wouldn't have frontage. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it would require a variance. And there's a lot of additional loopholes that would have to happen if they are done at the same time. And if they are recorded at the same time, then that lot never loses its frontage. It does not become a landlocked lot. The applicants and all of the property owners involved do not need to go and get a variance. Although it, it's very clear what they are trying to do. But if mm -hmm. the timing is off, then it adds some wrinkles. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rowden. I'm gonna um, ask the applicant or applicants if you would like to speak to this um, request, please. Yes, this is Rob Hallock. Okay. Um, we're at 52 Pond Street and we're just looking to adjust our lot line to include some of the woods behind our house, which we plan to keep in its current state in current use. Okay. And is there anybody, um, is Ms. McCarthy present? Doesn't sound like it. Uh, since this is one thing, Mr. Hollick, uh, are you, you're, I assume you're essentially working. Sorry, with... I was muted. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is Kelly McCarthy and Nicholas McCarthy. Um, obviously, we are interested in attaching the property to our currently existing property. Um, Did I lose you? Nope. You're still here. Oh, that was it. <laughs> uh, there's just not much more else to say to that. Okay. Really. 
Okay, I'm going to read um, one thing from the Conservation Commission, although I believe it was addressed. They had a concern with a large barn and a riding ring. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that may have been mistaken. There is not a large barn and riding ring currently. There is no barn proposed. Okay. And I believe the letter, uh, I think you said, Ms. Uh, McCarthy, if at such time you were to essentially create a riding ring with a horse or horses that you would communicate with the Conservation Commission about a man manure management plan. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um. Okay, uh, members of the board, please. Mr. Chair, this is Annie. I'd like to make a motion that we accept these applications as um, complete and take jurisdiction of both at the same time. This is Larry, I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and I hear a, and a second. Um, I was kind of thinking we didn't need to take jurisdiction on a lot line adjustment, but we probably do. I'm just coming up to speed on everything. Uh, so Jim, could you call the uh, roll please? Uh, Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoy. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, Discussion questions from the board. None at this time. Okay. Uh, any comments, questions from the public? Actually, this is Dennis Moran. Um, just a quick question. I'm looking at the two uh, drawings that you submitted or I'm not sure who submitted which one off the top of my head. Um, just one of them is stamped. And I was wondering why. Sorry, stamped, sealed by a land surveyor. Actually, they're both. Maybe there's an updated set that I don't have in front of me on the screen i'm sharing yeah, the first both. one is the mccarthy's that appears to have two survey Stamp. stamps and the other one also has two right dated february 18th 2021 you know what i completely take back what i just said i just not looking at it correctly I'm blind <laughs> um, so to the applicant, uh, I, I assume there will be, it probably says on your plan, but a new pin, it looks like possibly just one new pin will have to be for the new boundary lines. Is that correct? Steve, is Steve Casey on? Do you want to answer that? I can't read the drawing right now. What was the question? Uh, just for, for pins, because there's going to be a new new lot lines. Uh, although what I get from it looks like, well, you may have to have a couple of new pins. Um, hi, this oh, is, uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Steve Casey, the, the survey of record. Um, oh, perfect. I think the... Uh, the, are you referring to the map and lot numbers? Is well, yes. I just you know there'll have to be some boundary marking um, that will be put in place once this these new lot configurations are uh, are come up with. Is that in the plan? That is yes. There will be okay. a lot corner set. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm sure it's in there. I just I couldn't find it. Okay. Steve, if I may, Mr. Chairman, if I may speak to the engineer. 
Yes, please. Um, if you call me on Thursday, I spotted a couple of things that, remember the last set of plans? I, couple, how can I forget? There are a couple of things I, I picked up on that probably need to be moved or just lightly tweaked. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely contact you. Thank you. Uh, this is Mike. Uh, actually, just a question. Uh, you have on one of the plans an area labeled tree farm. Um, I'm just curious why that's labeled on the plan that way. That is the existing use of the property. So is that from a current use standpoint? Or is it just, it's, it's just something extra that's on the plan? It was actually uh, something that was observed in the field. So it, it was added oh, okay. to the plan. All right. I was just curious. Any other questions from the board? I'm assuming everybody had a good chance to uh, look at this. Right. And um, so the only condition that I can see on this is the one that uh, Ms. Rowden brought up that the lot line adjustments, if we approve both of these, then the, they must be recorded at the same time. Is that something that the applicants can do? I can have the, uh, the mylars ready at the same time and delivered at the same time, yes. Okay, so it's essentially, it's as you know, it's when they when they're recorded at the uh, registry of deeds is I believe what we're actually talking about. I, I will be recording them at the same time. Okay, perfect. Mr. Chair, this is Barbara, may I speak? Yes, please. I just wanted to clear something up for the new members that um, what Mr. Doggett is talking about, about tweaking something on the plan is because the registry is very strict about the certain things being over other things like you can't put lines through numbers and whatever so he's spotted some things that need to be moved so that the registry will accept it for recording if mr casey doesn't mind i'm not doing this to embarrass him but i can show a couple of just minor things they will blow your mind that the registry says no i don't mind go ahead jim if you see on your screen, I'm circling a little pine tree that is running with a line running through it. The registry will not take that. If you see here, this is an overhead electric line. And right up here at the tree line, the OE and the lines for designating the tree edge merge so there are several one two three they're not distinctive enough the registry will kick it out for that that means that the applicant then has to pay for another set of mylars to be printed okay well thank you for that little bit of uh, education i appreciate it and mr chair if i can bring up one thing that was brought to me by the assessor okay um, I will be adding to the, it's a condition subsequent about okay. recording the deeds that she needs them as soon as they've been recorded because she cannot legally change the ownership on the assessment cards until she has new deeds. Okay. All right. Think you can do that? Good. <clears throat> okay. Can uh, if there's no more discussion on this, can I have a uh, motion, please? This is Barbara. I'll make a motion to approve both of the lot line adjustments for 45 Highland and Pond, between 45 Highland and Pond Street and 52 Pond Street and the Backland 
Highland Street. Larry, I'll second. Okay. And I have a motion and a second. I just want to make sure, I know we've discussed it, but that conditional approval for both applications via the lot line adjustments are recorded at the same time. And I want that to be referenced in the, uh, in the, in the vote, please. Um, Mike, just one thing for the board is that this, because they are two separate applications, they need mm -hmm. to have two separate notices of decision. The we conditions do, okay. can, re can reference each other though. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. White, can you uh, rephrase your yeah? Your yes, motion I will. For, do you want say, me to do? With... You want me to do one at a time? Or you yeah, want it sounds to... like that's what we uh, we need to do. Okay, yes. sure. Okay, I will make a motion to approve the lot line adjustment between Forty Five Highland Street and the backland between Highland Street and Pond Street. Second, hello. Mike, hey. just real quick, someone, um, Steve Sr. asked if he could be recognized in the chat. Okay. And Mr. Sr.? <laughs> yeah, Steve Anderson, 51 Pond Street. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Uh, yeah, sorry we didn't get you before. I'll, uh, I'll allow you a member of the public. Yes, right across the street. Just okay. questioning on the uh, <clears throat> kind of brushed over the intended use of the property and its access from other areas, I guess, would be the question. Okay. What? Uh, nah, so what is your exact question? What, what's the future intent? I'm not sure if that actually um, is apropos with a lot line adjustment, um, but I'll if the applicant would like to address their uh, their future sure. intent. Yes, this is Rob Halleck. I'm just across the street from Steve. How are you doing, Steve? Yeah, very well. Just a, just the, a question. I seem to have missed yeah. it completely. No, the uh, intent is to protect the land just as it is um, and to put it into current use. And I did have a question whether I needed to submit anything else to keep it in current use or just um, that would just happen. My understanding having, and this is the chair, having uh, a lot of land that's been in current use and purchased land that's been in current use. As long as it's currently in current use, uh, you should not need to do anything. Okay. Uh, because and it sounds like most of the acreages are still above the 10 acre minimum. I would always check with the, uh, with the town and the tax assessor just to make sure. Thank you. And Steve, it's to keep it in current use as uh, far as. Yeah, that's fine, Rob. I was just, you know, they were, I, I had believed that land to be in current use uh, previously as we are. And uh, I just didn't know what was, what the intent was. So I thank you for the clarification. Okay. And uh, I'm going to close the public comment part again. And did we get the uh, full uh, motion and a second on this, uh, on the first one, Jim? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I motioned and Larry seconded. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may, just to answer Mr. Hollick's question or seeming okay. question. Uh, sure. The assessor is in town hall tomorrow. The telephone number is area code 603-382-4405. Thank you very much. Okay. We have a motion of second. Um, Please, Jim. Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoy. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. And then on uh, item four, I would like to have a motion and a second, please. Okay, this is Barbara. I'll make a motion to approve the lot line adjustment between 52 Pond Street and Backland between Highland Street and Pond Street, um, map five, block four, lots two and 19 dash two. Larry, I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And uh, 
And Jim, just remind me, how is it being um, recorded in these votes that they will be recorded at the same time? It will stipulate that I'm not I'm not going to go back and dig out the, the numbers, but the two mm -hmm. lots by their numbers will must be recorded at the same time. OK, thank you. OK, call the vote, please, Jim. Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. OK, thank you. And thank you, all the applicants. I appreciate your time. And I will close the public hearing on item three and item four on our agenda. At 8.31. At 8.31, thank you. I, you're the timekeeper, Jim. Okay, item five. Father and Son Realty Trust of Plastown, New Hampshire requests a public hearing on a major non-residential site plan for 103 North Main Street, Newton, New Hampshire. The property is referenced as tax Mac 9, block 3, lot 4. And um, I will open it up for um, for Father and Son Realty Trust. I believe this is Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, my name is Dennis Kuntel. I'm the engineer for uh, Mr. Fitzgerald. So okay. perhaps I can uh, speak first and uh, then he can chime in if he would like. Okay. So, I just want to make sure that um, Mr. Fitzgerald has authorized you to speak. Yes, sir. It actually, uh, father and son is out of Newton, New Hampshire, not Plasso. It's just a clerical error on the application. That's all. Okay. I was curious about that. Okay, go ahead, sir. So, so this is an existing lot of record. Uh, it's two acres, just over two acres of land. Uh, currently, there are four dwellings on this one lot. Uh, the town records identify each of them as two bedroom cabins, I guess. Uh, so there are eight bedrooms on this two acre lot. Uh, they have an existing well, uh, which the intent is to, to abandon that well. Um, each of these units have their own septic tank and uh, leaching area, which is probably a dry well of some sort. Uh, so there's uh, um, a, a spread out over the site and actually within the protective zone of of the, the, the well that serves all of these lots. So um, what Mr. Fitzgerald would like to do is to um, do away with all of these existing uh, dwellings and uh, be able to create a, a new layout for this site. The driveway entrance won't be the same, it'll be the same location and lines won't change or anything like that. You can see that the grading uh, uh, um, slopes from the north uh, um, side, which is uh, the left top of your screen, where it says elevation 100 there, and it slopes gradually to the lower right side of the screen, where you see elevation 90. Uh, down in that corner, you'll see where the uh, areas of wetland are, and uh, we have identified the SES soil boundary, which is not very accurate, um, but uh, we show it on the, on the plan because that's where uh, the SES has, has located the, the soil change boundary. Uh, when I was out there, I found wetlands a little further upslope, and, and that's designated Losing so, your voice. Excuse me? You're losing your voice. I'm sorry. How about now? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I'll try to scream out to you. <laughs> Just let me know. Uh, so perhaps we can go to the proposed plan now, Mr. Doggett.
Does that scroll down? Because the one that I have, I think if you scroll down the other direction, I think it'll it'll come up. Yeah, Jim, uh, it's the next page. It's page yeah, two. Yeah, you scroll down. If you go into the plan and then just scroll down. Sorry, I just I'm stuck in the Zoom mode. There it is. There you go. There we go. Oh, okay. So this is the proposed layout for the lot. And what we propose, instead of the eight bedrooms, uh, the four units, two bedrooms each, what we're proposing is to have six one-bedroom units, uh, having the driveway come in as in the same location, uh, parking, there'll be a parking space in front of each unit and an access door, uh, extra parking near the utility pole. Each unit will have its own septic tank, and the effluent will drain to uh, a septic system, which we've designed. We have not submitted that for approval yet, but we've designed it. And you can see where that's loaded, located on the top left side of the screen. The well uh, is a new location, a proposed well location that will uh, feed all of the units, service all of the units. It's a 100 foot radius. Um, the um, dumpster is located at the lower right side of the driveway, as you can see there. Uh, so they'll have like a community dumpster. Um, I didn't show uh, snow storage, but it's pretty evident that the snow storage would be either at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the uh, parking area or along that southerly side of the, of the uh, driveway area. Um, so obviously that's where the snow storage would be. Um, as far as uh, uh, the, the development of this uh, excavation and whatnot, we've shown a, a silt fence uh, at the lower side of the uh, excavated area uh, to protect any runoff from uh, uh, sediments from transferring to the wetland area. So where it said that line says SF, that's where some uh, sediment control will be uh, in, uh, in place uh, during construction. So the stormwater is the type of thing that we kind of looked at that as far as uh, picking up the roof runoff and, and considering recharging groundwater, which is one thing the state looks at when we do an alteration of terrain permit. They want to make sure that uh, you don't run, uh, have excess runoff that goes uh, off the site and doesn't reach out groundwater. So we're collecting the roof runoff in two areas at the end of the building and we're putting in a subsurface uh, drainage system, uh, Cultac uh, 180 high density uh, contactors. Uh, and they are, they infiltrate the, the surface runoff from the from the roof, and that'll recharge the groundwater to a certain degree. Uh, the runoff from the driveway uh, will drain from uh, the street Route, route 108, uh, the high area high spot, which is around elevation 98, drain toward the uh, uh, lower end of the. Uh, driveway and then directed toward with by grade toward the treatment swale, which will pick up the um, the surface runoff and uh, it's very uh, flat, half a percent slope. And with that, it will slow down any velocity and filter out any uh, sediments um, from um, transferring uh, uh, down slope. Uh, so the grass area between the driveway and the treatment swale is another area that will filter off some of the runoff uh, as, as uh, typically uh, best management practices uh, requires those type of uh, uh, features to, to treat runoff. And so with that, um, we were looking at the requirements for uh, stormwater and pretty extensive and for this small tubing a lot uh, we decided to submit a waiver uh, for that and um, uh, and have uh, uh, this the drainage system that we have uh, here. Uh, we have the uh, actually another waiver too that uh, we can talk about. 
So perhaps that's one thing we could do right now is I could present those waivers if that's possible, Jim. Actually, waivers come after taking jurisdiction. Okay, so why don't we go to the next page, Jim, if you can scroll down because the next page is a, is a uh, detail sheet. Okay, and what that shows is on the left-hand side is, is uh, a stone area during construction. Uh, there's trucks going in and out, vehicles going in and out, and, and it's typical to have a stone access way so that any sediments can fall off the tires of the truck before they enter the highway and, and minimize the amount of uh, uh, tracking of, of mud or, or any uh, sediments from uh, accessing the highway. So it's a it's a temporary construction entrance. Uh, so that's typical for most all uh, construction sites. The middle detail shows the sediment control filter sock that will be staked on the lower part of, of the uh, downslope from all of the construction, as I talked about earlier. The right-hand detail shows the uh, the, the detail for the, the roof drain, uh, the leaching trench that shows the uh, chamber system and how the roof runoff will come from a roof leader, go down underground into this uh, leaching area, and then uh, the, it would percolate into the ground and recharge the groundwater. So those are the details for that. And I guess, uh, I could probably at this point answer any questions that the board has so we could go back to the, any uh, of the other sheets if, uh, if you want. Well, I think that's a, a good for the, the your initial uh, presentation here. I'd like to uh, go on to and ask uh, Ms. Rowden, Ms. Rowden if she, uh, for her input and uh, towards the completeness of this application and concerns. I do actually think that the application is complete. Um, there are two waivers that have been submitted. I, given the scale of the project and what they're proposing, I do think that they're both reasonable waivers to grant. Um, I do have just general recommendations of conditions of approval with permits and waivers being written on the plan and mylars. Um, we can go through that a little bit later if we get to it. Okay. Um, I have a few questions I and this relates to what I consider the completeness I see the two waivers that you've asked for uh, from the uh, site plan review section uh, 714 and 723 uh, I'm just wondering about all the items under 715 uh, particularly 715C, the shape, size, height, and location of all proposed structures, including expansion of existing or new structures, first floor elevation, building elevations, uh, and a rendering of the proposed structure. Um, maybe things have gotten missed in the past before I got here, um, but that's, uh, that's one of a few concerns. It seems like there was a whole lot of uh, issues that are typically required, maybe they always haven't been in the past, but under uh, 714 and 715 that are just uh, completely left out. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Mr. Quintel can address that or- um, I can't, uh, but maybe Mr. Fitzgerald can answer as far as the building is concerned, the type of building he's gonna put in uh, and talk about that a little bit. Okay. Absolutely. So it'll be similar to a building that I built up on um, South Main Street. Um, the, there'll be six units um, together and they will be architecturally designed uh, upon granting a conditional approval. I'll start the process of the architectural design. Um, like to have them um, uh, accessible by uh, either handicapped or single, single people. Uh, the, the whole goal of this is to get, is to clean up the project uh, that's over there right now uh, as an eyesore and to build some, a brand new uh, code compliant building um, uh, as an improvement and also uh, get a better tax base for the town and uh, to follow all the rules as well. Is there any reason why the other requirements under the 
site plan information weren't uh, submitted with the application? Uh, we weren't aware that we'd need an architectural design, but um, once uh, hopefully we get conditional approval, uh, hopefully uh, I will get started on the architectural design right away. Mike, this is Jen. Um, mm -hmm. Typically the board has not required that for residential units is the short answer. Uh-huh. That's what I was, uh, that was my thought. I know since I've on the board, been on the board, we have required it of applicants and I, for one, want to be at least consistent with our ordinance. Um, so I do have a concern with, you know, if we have an ordinance not actually asking for the required submittals or waiving those requirements. I'm gonna open it up to the rest of the board for comments on this, please. Well, this is Barbara. Um, mm -hmm. Mike, what, um, in lieu of a, a, a full design, I mean, if he, if Mr. Fitzgerald was planning on building this building to look like his existing building, would a photo of what he's already built suffice or does he need to have an actual drawn plan? I don't think our ordinance requires an actual engineering drawn. I would just um, read it again, the shape, size, height, and location of all proposed structures. Um, first floor elevations, building elevations, and the rendering of the proposed structure. Um, you know, if, I'm not quite sure how, a, how we can do an appropriate job of approving something that we don't really know what it looks like other than a basic um, you know, outline of the uh, of the building. I don't like. I don't even know what the square footage of these uh, of these apartments are. Right. Right. And we and you're right. We have we have in the past required other applicants to give that same information that you're asking for right now. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, I have a picture of a, a building. Um, if you can all kind of see it, I don't know. That's an eight unit building. It would only be six of those units. They all be one level. Okay, I'm not. I can't see it. That's yeah, just it's not showing up right now. Gosh. Is that under, um, let me see if I can. A little closer, oh. Todd. Oh, I see what A little bit closer. See that right there? Has this been previously submitted to the board? If it's something no. that Jim could pull up? Then I, it, it has uh, not been submitted. Oh. Or, sorry, not this for a previous project. No. It's a 178 South Main Street was a previous project. It was in eight one bedroom units. I didn't want to go forward with the architectural design until we got conditional. That way I can mm -hmm. get these fire suppression and, um, and the layouts um for the project okay mr chairman i am currently sharing the picture of two of the rental units as they exist now mm -hmm. well i have no doubt what is being <laughs> planned will probably uh will be a better product right uh miss Reardon, i'm gonna ask for your help here um I know you said that in your opinion that the application is complete. When you review our zoning ordinance and particularly the section I'm talking about specific plan information required, um, am I asking for too much? No, you're certainly asking fully within what the board can require. Um, I will say the applicant could submit a waiver request if you saw it with requesting to not submit maybe everything with the architectural, but supplying a photograph. And then mm -hmm. it could be up to the board to decide whether or not um, that is sufficient information for you. In all honesty, I just pulled up um, Mr. Fitzgerald's other property at 178, which you can see on Street View on Google Earth. I was wondering if Jim could pull up, pull up the tax card with a picture of 178 for us for our 
as a possibility? Well, this discussion here is where we haven't even made the decision that this is a complete application yet. And I think what we're gonna, what I would like, uh, but it's also with the board's concurrence um, to define what we require as a complete application. Didn't Ms. Rowden say it was complete? <laughs> Yes. Sorry, that was my statement, but I will say I'm advisory only. What I was going to suggest is that um, perhaps the uh, perhaps if we could take a look at a picture from the tax card of the other property that he said is going to be comparable, that's eight units, whereas this one would be six, and have that as a reference. And then if the applicant made a um, statement with a request for a waiver in this instance of having a, a rendering of this particular project and refer to that other one. I agree with Mike. I kind of was wondering what's going to be built there and it would be helpful to see that picture. Mike, this is Jen. The board mm -hmm. always has the ability to ask for more information. If you don't feel it's complete, I would suggest that we kind of go through and if there is other pieces of information that you would also like supplied or the applicant would always have the ability to request additional waivers if that's the route that they would want to go but give them a full thought about what additional things you may like if it's beyond just this one topic so mm -hmm. that if you then wanted to continue it to a next meeting they could come back with everything okay are you saying we're going to reject this because we don't have a picture of the proposal? Of no, I'm not saying rejecting. I'm, all I'm looking at is our ordinance says certain things are required on an application. And for us to accept an application as complete, it would, you know, we either follow the ordinance or we don't. We and, also said in the past we haven't done that 100% all the time. Correct. I know from my personal opinion, I would like to at least have an idea of what to start off what this looks like. I see pictures of what the current conditions are, a simple elevation drawing of what is going in, I think would help. I know it would help me uh, form appropriate questions that may need to be asked. Could I ask a question? Is there any possibility of pulling up the picture from the tax card as I suggested? I'm trying to find it. Um, Was it 178 South Main? Yes, 178 South Main Street. Thank you. Um, Jim, if you would like, I can share my screen that actually has it pulled up. If that would okay. be all right with the I, I do have it. It's in the lower right hand corner of your screen now. No. No. Would you like me to share my screen? Certainly. Can folks see that? Oh, yeah. Yes. That's it. Okay. The total height is probably around 24 feet, uh, Michael. Mm -hmm. If okay. uh, height wise, each unit's going to be uh, approximately 16 feet wide by 32 feet deep. Okay. Um, okay. You said to me. Handicap access? I don't see the handicap access. Uh, no, uh, just a, I'm sorry, I, I must have I misinterpreted. Just a couple of stairs into the, into the units okay. um, versus the handicap. If the handicap would come, I would uh, sufficiently supply that as well. Okay. Jen, can we, uh, can you somehow get these pictures to, I know this is not the subject property, but at least it gives us an idea. Uh, Jen, can you get these to Jim to have them become part of the uh, of the, the the packet, the project here? Uh, sure. 
Mr. Fitzgerald, did you say that it's one floor? One floor. 16 yes, by 32, so about 512 square feet apiece? Approximately. Bedroom would be in the back. Kitchen, living area would be in the front front of the unit. What's the total square footage of all the units? If it's 512 times six, it's gonna be just over 3,000. Yeah, 3,000, 3,100 approximately. And what's the current square footage of the existing structures? Um, I don't know that. They're on the plan, um, existing. I know. Probably, probably similar. Um, yeah, are, is, there, is there anything that we need to consider around non-conforming with the expansion of square footage? Um, so, no. Um, the non-conforming nature is that it's multifamily and it's going from multifamily in multiple structures to multifamily in one structure, which actually makes it more conforming because of the number of bedrooms and putting them all into one unit, so. And are the current structures abandoned or are they in non-use? No. They're being used, they're, so they're occupied. Yes. Yeah, there's tenants in the units, all except for one. Damon. So what I'm wondering is if the applicant would like us to consider using, referencing 178 as an example of what's to be built and ask for a waiver of having the other, um, the specific renderings for this one. Yes. Given that, I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair. Okay, let's uh, state your motion, please. My motion is that with the three waivers requested that we consider this application complete and take jurisdiction. Larry seconds. Okay, I have a motion on the table and a second. Jim, please call the, uh, the vote. Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. Now that we've taken jurisdiction, I'll open it up. Uh, to the public for any input at this time. Cheryl Lord has her hand up. Okay, Jim, you're gonna have to. Hi, um, my name is Cheryl. I live diagonally across the street from this proposed um, project. I agree that it is an eyesore now, but I have some concerns that um, it's going to, uh, decrease our property value. Um, it's also a very, uh, dangerous entrance and exit where it's at the top of a hill. And it's also, um, located right next to the town conservation, um, property. So those are our concerns as being, you know, residents of this area. Okay. Thank you very much for your input. I appreciate that. Are there any other comments? I believe the uh, Conservation Commission did have some input. I'm not sure if they are here well, or if they'd like me to read. Sure, Mr. Chairman, this is Trisha, I'm here. Yes, uh, Conservation had a meeting and we have talked to Mr. Fitzgerald and Dennis Quintel and everything is going to be um, our requests of the erosion control and the certified uh, wetland scientist uh, flagging will all be done. Okay. And is that already on the plan or how will we be assured, how will we be assured that it will be on the plan? My, my stamp is already on the plan as a wetland scientist. Flag right. the okay. Wetlands. So so the information that Conservation Commission is yes. requesting is already there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Can I make a comment about some additional erosion control measures specifically? Uh, yes, this? and I'm going to open it up now for the, for the rest of the board to have questions. Good. Oh, Steve, uh, Steve Senior, Steve A. Senior wants to be recognized. Mr. Chair. Why, thank okay. you again. I appreciate it. Sorry, I have to send a uh, little notes, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's. Uh, I'm coming on my 45th year living here in town. And I think when I first moved into the town, I always came around that corner and I noticed that particular little wonderful subdivision out back <laughs> that uh, Mr. Fitzgerald is talking about removing. And as the years go on, it, it deteriorated, it deteriorated, it deteriorated. And I think that, uh, you know, now when we have guests, you know, they say, geez, this is a wonderful town. Well, what the heck is going on in that corner? <laughs> and I think that uh, I would like to speak in regards, I've done a lot of development through the years and uh, I've worked with both of these individuals. And I think that what we have put before us, I think is a sort of a shining star and a saving grace to really clean up what I consider to be one of the biggest eyesores we have in this town and it's it's been referred to as what anything from the den of iniquity to the to a crack house and i i am stand in strong favor i'm sure that the work that the both individuals who are representing this will move forward in a great fashion and i just want to say as a neighbor of so many years that uh, uh, this is a very welcome addition to the town in my eyes I'm sorry to disagree with others, but uh, that's just the way I feel. And thank you for my time. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate thank it. Uh, Mr. Moran, you were gonna say, you had an input, please. Yeah, um, and I would agree with, um, is it Steven? Sorry, I missed your last name. I, I think this is a potentially a great project. Um, <laughs> on the self plan south side of the septic system, the leaching field, I would recommend some additional erosion control in that area. It's um, based on the grit, the current topography. There's a, a low point between the tree line and the structures that potentially could, since that area is going to be stir disturbed. Um, just show it on the drawings. That way it is considered during construction. That certainly can be done. No problem, uh, Mr. Moran. <laughs> And then as the um, Miss Lord mentioned, the, I have a few concerns on visibility on North Main Street. Um, potentially, and it, I know it was mentioned that there was eight bedrooms there now. I'm not sure how many people actually reside there. The additional traffic going out on 108 um, from both vehicular and then it doesn't look or there's the potential of a... Um, if the waste management came in to empty the dumpster to turn that vehicle around, if there's other vehicles parked there, that vehicle may be backing into the state road. Um, I think it's about a 20 foot drive aisle. So both from fire department access, as well as just larger vehicles getting in there to try to turn around without backing onto 108. Mr. Chair, may I, this is Barbara, may I comment on yes, part of that? Chair? Um, I was also looking for emergency vehicle uh, access where they would be able to turn around. And I was wondering if the location of the proposed dumpster could maybe be moved over to where that one house is going to be knocked down and maybe the, uh, driveway could be extended a little bit further so that uh, a fire truck or dump truck or anything could turn around right there. Yeah, that's a good point. I was wondering the same thing. I don't believe uh, the fire chief has had a chance to comment. Uh, Maybe the applicant or Jen can answer this question I have um, because it's there's already buildings out there. I'm not sure if a new DOT driveway permit is required. That's a question. I think so. 
Because of the increased number of individual units, DO, and technically, yes, DOT will likely not require any no. modifications, however. Okay, but they do require a permit, a new permit from DOT. Oh. It should be applied for or confirmation. Okay, I'm getting uh, mixed. I don't believe so. No. We're, we're reducing the, the, the number of bedrooms, and even though the, the dwellings are we're going from four to six dwelling units. I think that the traffic is going to be, uh, the number of vehicles will be less. So I didn't think that we would need to have uh, a driveway permit. Dennis, I've gotten in a couple of other towns, the confirmation emails from DOT to confirm that as satisfying okay. that requirement, so. All right, I can certainly contact them and find out from them directly. Yes, I would, I would like, um, at least a comment from from DOT because you know the years have gone by the traffic has increased uh, there may be some minor uh, changes that can be done I know you're attempting to use the the existing driveway mm -hmm. but there may be some minor changes that could could make a big difference uh, bringing in a little bit more expert help could uh, help us I can also work with the fire chief as far as the turnaround uh, we thought that can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, the turnaround that we show where the uh, where the pole is to the left of the buildings, we thought was was adequate for a turnaround. But I certainly can meet with the fire chief to to find out from him if that is adequate. And if it isn't, then uh, certainly get his input of what would be uh, acceptable to him for a turnaround. Okay. I, I yes, guess I, my the, sorry. Ahead. I, I guess my concerns is it's shown as parking and people tend to put cars where they can. So if it's nighttime and there's, you know, an ambulance that comes in there, you're going to have every single space full potentially. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I think this would, we'd like to have a uh, consultation with the fire chief and also a, uh, I'd like to see a, a memo letter from the fire chief. Uh, with any of his concerns and how they've been addressed. Just for the record, this was sent to the fire chief, the police chief, conservation, the day it was received. Yeah. We'll work with the fire chief and the, and the police as well. If we need to make the turnaround bigger, I'm sure Dennis can engineer a plan that has a turnaround bigger as well. Okay, thanks. It might uh, speed things up if you absolutely um, push that a little bit versus just us hoping for some reply. Absolutely. No, we'll work with the board. Absolutely. I want to clean up that site and um, mm -hmm. make it a better tax benefit for the town as well. Is anything paved out there right now? It's all gravel or it's whatever, gravel. correct? That's correct. It's all gravel. Mr. Fitzgerald, I noticed in the, in your write-up, um, you talked about um, state-of-the-art energy efficient, and uh, which kind of always brings a smile to my face. What do you? What does that mean to you for this for this particular project? Well, uh, this project, uh, I'm kind of excited about it actually because I'm going to keep it uh, as a retirement for myself and my wife and children as well. But it's going to comply with all codes um, above and beyond uh, energy efficient, energy efficient insulation, roofing, siding, windows, easy accessibility, Wi-Fi, um, fire protection. Um, a lot of the things that you don't see uh, in the existing cabins for sure. Um, and again, I work with the building department, fire, fire department, police department um, on this project as well. What, uh, since we're on that topic, just what kind of uh, heating and cooling are you planning for the for the units? Forced hot air, and it uh, there's two systems that I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking at a propane system or uh, um, an electrical, like a Mitsubishi kind of wall hanging unit, um, split unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the uh, the mini splits that you're talking about there, the Mitsubishi or uh, yes. That's kind of the, the way to go. And I noticed it kind of runs, uh, the buildings kind of run uh, east-west, which gives you a south-facing roof, although 
they I know on your other construction there were dormers there. Do you ever uh, look at anything in this design that would make it uh, solar ready for uh, for photovoltaics or something I'd like love that? To put, I'd love to put solar on there if uh, if I could do it um, location wise. Uh, and a big benefit too is that it's it is uh, conservation, which I spoke with on extending the um, the erosion control, is the walking trails right next door, which makes it very nice as well. Yeah, that would be a good amenity for uh, for people who want to rent there. Yes, yes everything sir. we just discussed. Okay. Uh, any more questions from the board at this time? Do I can't get in? Mike, this is just one item. If there is potential of modifications due to emergency vehicles, that may be something the board wants to see before you give mm -hmm. a final approval because it might be enough of a change potentially. I don't I can't say one way or the other that you would want to have it then come back before the plan so, or back before the board. Just mm -hmm. something for folks to keep in mind with next steps. Yes. Um, I don't like to speak for the board. I usually like to have board members speak first, but I would like to put in that there's, there's two things that I would like to see uh, before moving forward. And it's the discussion um, with the fire chief and a uh, response to us from him and the discussion with, uh, with DOT um, in case that we don't expect it right now, but if that, um, in any way modifies to any major extent the uh, the driveway cut. Um, so those are two things that are on my mind right now. You also do yeah. have two waivers that are outstanding. Sorry. Okay. Possibly Mr. three. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> go ahead, Larry. So again, we're going to go back to the same. Uh, if we use page four, we would have had our answers tonight, and we wouldn't have to continue this. I agree, Larry. Um, I think that's one thing that we as a board and I'd like to look into is the, the communication channels with the appropriate department heads um, needs, needs some work, needs some big work. And I think it would make everybody's time um, much more efficiently spent. Also, so maybe we can work with the selectmen on that. Those, those buildings back in 2008, I believe, during the ice storm, pretty sure 90%, those buildings are condemned and no one's supposed to be in them anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have no doubt that that just doesn't really, uh, doesn't really play into the decision that we have to make right now. Are there any other, um, my view right now is, I would like to continue this, but that's up to the rest of the board and the applicant. Um, the could two address, things that- Could we address the uh, the waivers tonight? Uh, because if they, uh, one way or another, I would like to know some- How would it continue further? Uh, yes, I, I feel comfortable with that. Uh, and um, Jim, could you bring those waivers up to the screen, the, at least the, the two that have been submitted? One moment. You want me to read this, uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, why don't you for the record and then uh, maybe just give us a, uh, your, I think you may have the reasoning in the, in the statement, but just go ahead, please. So this is the waiver for stormwater management. Uh, the applicant is requesting uh, the granting of a waiver from the specific requirements of site plan regulation section 723. Uh, the stormwater management standards. This lot is a small 2.1 acre lot. The stormwater from the roof runoff will be collected, stored, and recharged to the groundwater by a subsurface chamber system. The calculations show that post-development impervious surface, 6,487 square feet, is less than pre-development impervious surface of 7,390 square feet. 
Stormwater runoff from the driveway flows over a grass slope to a four foot wide grass treatment swale. The swale will treat the runoff by reducing velocity, causing sediments to settle. The grass will further filter sediments and uptake excess nutrients. The design meets the goal of the regulation by number one, minimizing or reducing the stormwater runoff by reducing the impervious surface. Number two, minimize non-point source pollution with grass slopes and treatment swale. Min number three, minimize the total volume of the surface water runoff by re uh, reducing the impervious surface. Number four, uh, reduce stormwater pollution by implementing the sediment control devices during construction and establishment of grass slopes after construction. Number five, the design will recharge groundwater and mitigate runoff, protecting the groundwater resource and adjacent wetland resource area. Granting the waiver will not be detrimental to the public safety, health, or welfare of other properties. This waiver will substantially secure the objectives, standards, and requirements of these regulations as the specific circumstances warrant granting. Signed by myself, Dennis Quintel. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments, questions from the board? I have two quick ones. Um, this uh, um, subsurface chamber system, what is the lifespan um, of those? Well, I don't really know, but I mean, it's only clear water coming off the roof. It isn't like uh, coming off a driveway or a paved surface that would have sand or, or, or dust on it. So on a fucking uh, hill. typically they last an uh, extended period of time. So uh, similar to a leach field, uh, all depends on uh, uh, how they're used and whatnot. I, I believe as long as they're connected properly, they should last uh, an extended okay, amount of time. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? This is all proposed to be paved, correct? With asphalt? Yes, that's sir. correct. The, the post conditions, okay. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, go ahead. We'll make a motion to approve so we can take a vote on it. Okay, I have a motion to approve uh, this waiver. Do I have a second? I second, this is Annie. Okay, Jim, we have a motion and a second. Please, uh, if there's no further discussion, please call the uh, vote. Mr. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Lavoy? Aye. Ms. Collier? Aye. Mr. Foote? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Moran? Ms. White? You're muted. Ms. White, you are muted. I'm sorry, I. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. And then your the second waiver for high intensity soils mapping. Do we have uh, a copy of that? I can read that also. Uh, I have it in front of me. Uh, on behalf of Potter and Son Realty Trust, I'm seeking a can't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll try to speak louder. I'm sorry. Uh, Thank you for letting me know that though. Um, on behalf of Father and Son uh, Realty Trust, I'm seeking a waiver from the Newton, New Hampshire Site Plan Regulation Section 7 Plan Requirements, Section 714K, which requires the site to be uh, HISS, which is a high intensity soil map. Uh, map. The Soil Conservation Service soils data show that only one soil type predominates the site, which is a Canton type soil. Wetlands are to be delineated, which I have done and shown on the plans. Test pits have been dug to verify the soils uh, for the proposed septic system. And the soil uh, match what the Soil Conservation uh, Service shows as a Canton type soil. Uh, this is signed respectively by Todd Fitz Fitzgerald. Okay, thank you. And I know uh, Ms. Rowden commented on this also and saw no issue with this. Any uh, comments from the board? This is Annie. I'd like to make a motion to approve this waiver. Does Larry have a second? 
Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Hearing none, Jim, can you call the vote, please? Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we don't have a written waiver for seven, seven, uh, two dash, what is it, five? Uh, 715 C, 715 Charlie. Okay. Was the one I was talking about with an elevation. Right. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the verbal waiver request for 715 dash Charlie. This is Barbara, I'll second. Okay, any further discussion on that? Hearing none, Jim, can you call the vote, please? Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. So, oh, where we are at the board right now is, I believe, we either. Could, could I ask a question? Uh, Please do, Mr. Uh, Gerald. Could I ask that the, the board, um, and thank you for being very receptive, uh, give me conditional approval with the exception that uh, we need input from the fire chief and from DOT so I could possibly start the architectural design uh, of the building? Would that be asking too much? I'd like to make a motion that we grant that conditional approval with the conditions of getting the DOT approval and um, the DOT note and the fire chief approval of the design. I second that. Can I make a couple of quick recommendations for that? For, this is yes. for any motion. Um, that all waivers received be noted on the plan, that all conditions of approval are noted on the recorded sheets, just a general catch-all, all local, state, and federal permits are received and numbers are noted on the plan, so that would be like the septic. Um, all stamps and signatures of licensed professionals are listed on the final plan set, a mylar is provided for recording and that all fees have been paid. I'd like to amend my motion to include all those things. Ms. Rowden, I already have those on my list. You just beat me to it. The one question, uh, what sheets does the board wish to have recorded? Uh, well, what are the standard ones we have? And Barbara, you can help me. I know you've mentioned this many times. We yeah, would um... Bert, Jim. Well, you know, may I say something? If if we're gonna, if he's going to maybe think about extending the the driveway for a turnaround, I don't know if we can actually say that this proposed site plan is complete enough to to um, to record this yet until it's been adjusted. Mm -hmm. So. so Mike, can I respond to Barbara a little yes, bit or what she just please said? Do. So what can happen is that it, it can't be recorded until it is the final design. So if Dennis and Todd go and talk with the fire chief and everything's peachy keen, then going to get it recorded is fine. If there is a significant change or even a minor change, it would have to be changed on the plan before it can get recorded. Okay. Yes. Um, sorry, I was going to say something else, but lost my train of thought. And along that lines, if that's the problem I have with these conditional approvals fairly quickly, is if there has to be a design change 
when do we want as a board to require to come back to the board? Right. Because we may be voting on something that isn't going to be there. Is there a way you can have that reflected in your motion, Annie? Um, what were you thinking? I'm, I'm not sure what you're thinking. It, I'm, well, I'm, I'm typically, if lost. there's any substantial change, it needs to come back to the board. Uh, Mr. Substantial... Chairman, yeah, Mr. Chairman, could I speak? Um, sure. Uh, it, it sounds like that you're interested in uh, input from DOT. And so if there's any changes from DOT, it wouldn't have any effect on the site itself. It might be with the location of the driveway, moving it either downslope or upslope a little bit. So that to me is not a drastic change. As far as the fire chief is concerned, uh, uh, apparently he hasn't had any input at this point in time, but we certainly can meet with him if the only concern that he might have is with uh, some sort of a turnaround as far as uh, moving the turnaround that I have where the pole is to a different location or adding a turnaround for, for fire protection uh, apparatus or, or uh, ambulance uh, and probably a sign probably that says no parking in, in that spot would probably be what he would be looking for. I don't know as those are drastic changes to the plan that the board that would require going back to the board, but that's certainly up to you to, to make that decision. Okay, so I'll throw it out to the board. How do we want to uh, stipulate in this vote that we are sure that these things are complied with correctly? Since once, if we do this vote this way, we don't have a lot of uh, say anymore. That's the problem with conditional approvals. Right. So, Mike, um, you can put in that if there are any substantive changes to the plan as approved this evening that they have to come back. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, if it, a complete change, a minor tweak, you know, an extension of what's already there for the turnaround, that would not come back to you. Yeah. If it has to be a little T intersection or something really significant, then it would come back. There is a little bit of a judgment call there. Mm -hmm. I have a question for my own knowledge. Who defines Wait. significant? Uh, <laughs> that's a great question, Dennis. I mean, I, I look at this as it, it being in Dennis's seat you know, developers come to me, can you make this one change? Change the site by one foot, it's only a foot. And that, from my perspective, designing stuff completely changes the entire design. All the stormwater has to change, all this grading has to change. And I agree for 99% of the people, it is no, there is no change. But where they're asking for a waiver for stormwater, I generally agree with it personally and professionally. Um, in this case, I don't see the problem in the applicant asking for a waiver. And I would agree, and this is just me speaking, that the site is very flat. The, to accommodate an additional turnaround is very easy for the applicant. And people can agree with me and disagree. You know, If they need another hammerhead or 30, 40 additional uh, square foot path of paving, it's, I don't think it's detrimentally gonna affect the, pro the project in itself. But that's just my opinion as a non-voting member, I guess, right now. <laughs> You're voting. <laughs> you You're there. a voting member. <laughs> Thank you. That's yeah. why, because uh, I know you have some expertise in this, uh, in this area. Okay, for my uh, clarification, we have a uh, motion on the table and a second. And Jim, could you... Uh, refresh my mind and the rest of the boards on what that actual motion is, please. And the conditions with it. Give me just one second to figure out which page, because the board never decided that. I believe it's page number two. Oh, that's right. Yes, page two would be what I would recommend. Thank you, Tim. Okay, on a motion of Ms. Collier to approve the application with the following condition. Uh, obtain all local and state land use permits, permit numbers to be added to the plan, all waivers to be noted on the plan, sheet number two, to be a mylar to be recorded, um, to be built in the same style as 178 South Main Street. And item five is the fire, fire chief approval of the driveway design. 
Okay, four and five DOT and five with fire chief, right? Is that what I got? Right. Uh, okay. DOT comes under number one. Oh, okay. What was four? I didn't write fast enough. Four was to build in the same style as 178 South Main Street. Okay. Can you read the wording of five again, Jim? I apologize. Uh, five is um, requ requires the fire chief's approval of the driveway design that I'm condensing it from what everybody threw out there. If you want it differently. I guess my recommendation would be as drawn or I'm trying to think of the correct phrase. I, just to provide clarification to allow the applicant to alter it to fit the needs of the fire department. Comply, right? Comply with the fire department needs? That would definitely work. And Jim, within, with, uh, within that, I would like the fire chief to submit that decision in writing to the planning board, at least for our records. So you want, part a, of the, you want a clean letter from the fire chief? Yes. I'll accept those amendments. <laughs> Jim, can you read five again with those amendments? Wait, wait, Sorry. wait until I get, finish getting it written. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Dennis. Well, this is Larry. Go ahead, Larry. Dennis, wouldn't it be much easier if you you probably have enough room there to do a horseshoe driveway? So you go in on the right, do the horseshoe, and out on the on the left. That suffices by your department turnaround. I think the best thing to do is to speak with the fire chief and find out what he would like to see. Uh, I, I would hate to make any recommendations at this time. Uh, but uh, I, I, under, I, I understand that the fire department and, uh, has a number of different vehicles, and I'm not sure how he would like to handle this. Uh, if there was a fire there, I don't believe he'd bring a fire truck right up close to a house. So I'm not sure uh, how that would work out for him. Uh, if, there's a, if there's an ambulance requirement for an ambulance, I believe that uh, that would probably require some sort of a, a turnaround for an ambulance. But again, uh, I, I think that I'll, I'll leave that up to him. So I'll speak to him. I don't have far to walk to meet with him. So I certainly can <laughs> see him very uh, uh, conveniently and, and get his input. And I'll try to get him to write some sort of a memo if, if possible. Thank you. And Mr. Quinta, I like, or Mr. Fitzgerald too, the uh, minimizing the amount of impervious surface is always a, uh, minimizing the impervious surface is always uh, an attractive goal with the uh, the fire access. Okay, Jim, do we have? Okay, so th this is what it will read. Number five will now read a clean letter from the fire chief regarding the driveway design with any minor changes necessary. Good. Okay. Does that sound good to the to the board? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, we have a motion. And a second. There's no the, second uh, yet. Oh, do I have a second? Can I just second. say? Oh, sorry. Can I say one thing before we move forward? Please. Have we addressed Cheryl Lord's concerns directly yet? The well, I'll answer that to start. The uh, consultation with DOT is my attempt to address the concerns about the um, the road hazard. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to do it. And then the other one, which was the other one? Property um, value. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is a very subjective. Um, I don't think this board even really has it under, you know, to be able to address that in a, in a project of this scope of, the, of what right. the before and after. Barbara, do you have something? You look like you have. Well, I, yeah, I'm just going to say um, what Mr. Fitzgerald is planning to put here has got to be tons better than what's there right now. 
And he's just going to, that's going to, in my mind, that's going to improve property values. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the question. Yep. And I'll second the motion. Okay. Okay, Jim, we have a, uh, a motion to approve with conditions in a second. If there's no further discussion from the board, will you call the vote, please? Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Mr. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous. Okay, thank you. And I just want to do um, thank for your help with this. And we are going to look at our procedures, I think, for uh, future applications of just not having everything included. Um, and I'd like to reiterate that uh, contact with the fire chief um, will be very important. And other than that, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you very much. Okay. And I will, when I do my conceptual, I will forward it over to the planning board as well, just so you can see the, um, the building as well. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank I will now welcome. close the uh, public hearing on Father and Son Realty Trust. And Jim, you have the time. 9.37. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you too, Mr. Quintel. Okay. Uh, Let's go on in uh, board business and correspondence. Uh, acceptance of the minutes of the 22520 meeting. Can I have a motion to accept, please? This is Barbara. I'll make a motion to accept. Okay. This is Annie, yeah. second. Okay. I kind of dropped off the meeting on that with bad connection. Are there any uh, corrections that anybody saw that need to be done? There's one note I'd like to make, which is that one board member did make a statement, which um, I believe she meant in semi jest, um, but about how the fire chief should get a lawyer. I think we need to clarify that that is not a recommendation of the planning board and that um, there is certainly no reason for the fire chief to have to get a lawyer to deal with us. Okay. I guess I missed some uh, good discussion on that meeting when my call dropped off. And I just explain, I didn't minute that because similar to the applicant who made a disparaging remark about me, those really don't belong in minutes. I agree. I just want that noted in the minutes that, that it, in our minutes from tonight, that um, that statement, which was recorded is not anything that it was said in jest. It was not a, um, not a recommendation for the fire chief. In the interest of all, of all departments in the town working well together. Do you have a way you can uh, note that Jim, keeping it to a minimum? Yeah, I, 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 can, I can write something short and sweet up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, can you call the uh, vote, please, Jim? Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. I was not in attendance, so I have no vote. <laughs> not sure. Uh, we'll call that an abstention. Mike, can just I just for, just, for just uh, a Jen, quick edification for new members, even if you weren't at the meeting, and I understand, Mr. Ren, you were not even a member at that meeting, but if you weren't at the meeting, but you believe the minutes to be true, you can vote for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't know either way, so I'd hope so. <laughs> okay. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. That is unanimous with one abstention. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the NEPRA manifest. And okay, found my copy. Okay, and uh, the where I think everybody has the, the uh, sheet, it was sent in the package. Uh, 
vote to uh, approve. I'm gonna go to the total amount, 373.40. And um, we don't need to know anything else. Can I have a motion to pay, please? So move. This is Annie. Thank you, Larry. Okay. And Jim, we have a uh, motion and a second. Please call the vote. Uh, Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoy. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zelinsky. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next on the agenda is committee reports. Do we have anything start with uh, master plan? We do. Um, <laughs> we have, um, I don't know if any, I hope all of you have had a chance to look at the um, vision survey that RPC has put together and or listen to the video um, of the master plan steering committee so that we don't have to spend a lot of time on it um, tonight. I'd like very much to see if we could get it approved to be able to put out to the um, to the public and start to get our vision survey done. Um, so I guess comments from the board at this point. Any I comments? Can share, I can share my screen if you would like for the survey. Yes. All I'm trying no, to do is to have us not spend the hour and a half again. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I had the chance to go through the survey and I found it um, mostly appropriate. Uh, the video you talk about, I was not able to see. Hmm. Uh, so I'll try again. I was, when I was, I had been out of town at a place that I don't get very good cell reception. So that may have been why it just wouldn't come through. Uh -huh. Several current members of the planning board were at that meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Annie, I was at that meeting. I have no issues. I'd like to move forward with it, but also let the rest of the board members look at it. So how much of the board was able to uh, take a look at the, the initial survey? It sounded like a lot. Yeah. This uh, was on. Me. <laughs> um, Mr. Lavoy, um, Mr. Foote, and um, Mr. Moran and I were all present at the meeting. I'm not, I hope I haven't missed anybody, but I might have. I think, um, Bob Mashan was there, wasn't he, Annie? Yes, Bob Mashan was there. I will say the survey has gotten four views. Okay, so what kind of vote are you asking, are you looking for tonight, Annie, from the board? Well, if, if any board member has something that they would like to see altered on that survey, then I think that that comment needs to be made. And if not, I would like the board to move, to approve it for distribution. Okay. Um, since I'm not seeing a lot of import right now, would it would it um, delay things too much if I requested board members to take a good look at it in the next two weeks and then we give you this vote in two weeks could, or the next? Could we find out if there are any board members who have not seen it at all right now, you know, who have not looked at the survey? Are this there is any Barbara. Board members? This is Barbara. I have not, have not had a chance to look at that. Okay, then in that case, I think it would be appropriate. I, unfortunately, yeah. but yeah. I think it would be appropriate. Yeah, maybe next time, um, if it, maybe you did and I missed it, if you could send out a um, maybe a note to the to the board from the from the committee requesting that we review prior to our next meeting. I believe you Jim may have done that and I missed it. I believe Jim sent out the survey, but. Um, I did, did request that. I'm, I'm yeah. sure he did. I think I just okay. didn't have a chance to do anything with it. Okay. 
I looked at it, but I don't remember seeing that we were going to vote on anything today. But that was probably just just me. I I got it at the last minute. Okay, so so given that, um, there are a couple of other things. One is that um, because so much of the land use chapter, remember. Um, when Jen did her presentation on the master plan, there were three chapters that she recommended to prioritize. One mm -hmm. being the vision chapter, which is what we're working on and aiming to complete by the end of June. Um, also, we're doing updates on the various buildings and departments in town. And I'm, Jim is working on um, checking to see if the town has ever approved uh, it's, a warrant to have a town CIP because that would be part of what we'd hope to do is to develop a CIP. Um, I know many of the departments already have them, but it's never been publicized. So the second chapter that she had recommended strongly that we work on is the land use chapter. And an awful lot of that is going to be um, informed by results of the 2020 census, which should be available in the first half of 2022. So that one would be done next year. Um, and then the third one is the implementation chapter, which we've not had, but would be informed by both of those two chapters as well as the um, CIP. So um, that would also be next year. So just an update on that. Um, the, are there any questions on that or comments? I have a question about, and I apologize for my ignorance on this. What, and maybe Jen, you can answer this question. What is our goal for a survey response? And that follows my second question is my concerns are it's so long. And I find myself as somebody that can blast through this quickly that you may turn a lot of people off by the breadth of questions that we're asking. So ideally you would get between three and 500 respondents um, in a similar. So that's like. 20% of the town? Yeah, I've had similar success in um, similar sized towns with a survey that is, you know, maybe one question either way of length. And the positive thing about this survey uh, mechanism, if someone only answers the first three questions, you've gotten some good information. Because it's what do people love about the town? Or what thoughts do they have going forward in five, 10, 15 years? It's an open-ended question. Okay, so, and I think you touched upon this last time of putting the most important questions in the first 10 questions. Yes, um, the other good news, because it would be an online-based um, survey, is that we can actually get some data just by the fact that people take it online. You can get an idea of where they're taking it from, um, some other demographic targeting for social media, but we're going to get several hundred on this with very little trying. Um, as much as the planning board and the master plan committee and other folks in town are willing to put it out there even more, talk to neighbors, talk to acquaintances that live in town, that just elevates it. So there Thank will you. also be paper versions available um, at, through the library and at town hall. Um, I don't know if anybody comes to town hall these days, but uh, or to the library, but there will be paper versions available for people. Okay, well, Annie, thank you very much for all the I work. I have one more thing. I have one more thing, which okay. is we currently have one member of the planning board who is a representative to the master plan steering committee, and according to our rules, we can have up to three. So I'd very much like to have you open it up um, to see who would be interested in being a member of the steering committee so we don't have a quorum of one person. Okay. Uh, well, we can uh, at least we'll initially open it up tonight. Is there anybody that would like to volunteer for that position? It's Annie, uh, would that be well me? needed. Pardon me? Annie, would that be me? That would be you, would be, yeah, you would definitely yeah. be somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm in there. laughs> okay. It can Perfect. be, it can be an alternate also, or a, or a member, um, but we can have up to three. Okay. And does that three, because it's, as for the new folks, that is an issue because any more than three, you'd have a quorum. Um, 
and that applies even if it's an alternate there, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, All right. Mr. Chair, if I can. Well, if you need one more, my hand's up. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. And uh, Jim, what were you, you were saying something? Oh, I was cautioned that at the last master plan steering committee, there was more than a quorum of the planning board and there, it was not posted as a planning board meeting. So we do definitely need to be careful. We do, that, and fortunately it wasn't a meeting because we didn't have a quorum because it was only me who was there. That was my, that was my response. <laughs> yeah. However, I was still reminded by a citizen in town who watched the tape that some people can just be like that. Yep. I won't go so that, next time. That brings up a question from, I, now are you, you're here, are you, you holding these married meetings, they're hybrids, right? Yes. Or, uh, okay. Um, so if a member joined by Zoom, does, does that count as being towards the quorum? Yes. Uh, how about if you never turn your audio on? <laughs> Doesn't matter, they're very presence, regretfully. <laughs> Okay, so that's something I guess, well, Annie is the chair, you'll have to keep an eye on that during the meetings. Yes. It's easy when everybody's in person, but, you know. Well, okay. and, and I would like to say, and, and I'd love to hear from Larry on it. Um, someday, hopefully planning board meetings will be held in a hybrid way um, at mm -hmm. town hall. And um, right now, my understanding is that there are some upgrades that are about to happen to the cable system. Right now, the people who are attending via Zoom can hardly be heard um, in the planning board meeting, so or in the um, master plan meeting by the people who are physically present. So I understand those upgrades are going to be coming, and I hope Larry will keep us informed of that so that we know when it is that it might be appropriate for planning to want to be have a meeting at town hall yeah yeah i think that's on the radar so we'll keep an eye on that okay thank you very much annie i appreciate all the work you're putting into this and uh thanks uh the new guys who are just joining you yeah and then uh, other committee uh barbara do you have anything i do Mr. Chairman, before time. you move on well, sorry go ahead jim um, would you like a motion to put Mr. Lavoy and Mr. Marshawn on the master plan steering committee? I guess I probably should. I did, if, yeah, we probably do need that. Okay. Yes, please. Turn I'll make mind. that motion. This is Annie. Okay. I'll second it. This is Barbara. Okay. Thank you, Annie and Barbara. We have a motion and a second. Jim, please call the vote. Uh, Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoy. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foote. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zielinski. Aye. Thank you. That, that's unanimous. Okay, thank you. And there was one other thing I guess that possibly we're supposed to look at tonight, uh, the possible adoption of the 2021 impact fee update. Right. Um, Jim, I'd like to push that to the next meeting because on April 6th, the um, author of the report is going to be joining the Selectman Zoom meeting or the Selectman via Zoom to present and answer any questions. Uh, at least that's my latest update. Uh, if that's the case, then I'd like to wait um, till we can actually ask questions prior to adopting it. So I would push that to the uh, I believe it's April 13th meeting. Might I ask, only because I've been pushed in the direction of getting the planning board to approve it tonight. Um, okay. that some sort of a motion just so that I can report downstairs that the board took deliberate act action rather than I wasn't forceful enough in getting you guys to. <laughs> okay, then how about some to the extent that uh, we, the board members will, to the best of their ability, uh, join the Zoom meeting on April 6th, and we will vote on the ordinance at our following meeting on April 13th, Very or good. something to that effect. 
Sounds like a CYA, but that's all right. Would Nothing you like me to, to post that as a quasi meeting in case more than three members of the planning board show up? Mm. Uh, oh. You can post it and just say that no board business will be taken up. Just in yeah, case. Yeah, OK. Thank you. How about that for the master plan steering committee? Can can you just say that no board business would be taken up? Except you're doing dealing with the master plan, which is it, which is enacted. board business. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no okay. Unfortunately, I was just trying to let it be that Dennis could come. That's all. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> okay, Jim. Uh, uh, so, do you have something that we can uh, either you can forward, or if you need us, we'll vote on it real quick. Um, I have the recording here. You guys discussed it. I'm sorry, but they took away my cattle prod. I can't use it on you guys. Yeah, well, that's never worked too well on me anyway. Okay. Uh, I think that's the end of the business. Is there any uh, comments or uh, anything, any new business that anybody needs to bring up? Mr. Chair, Larry? Yes, go ahead, Larry. Can we get that page four on the next Schedule meeting, please. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. Barbara, is that part of what you're working on at all? Um, no. The page. <laughs> I know we've had discussions on this. and right. I haven't had a chance to, to meet with Jim to see, you know, what would be a better way to, to formulate that. But... Um, mm -hmm. I can see what I can do. Mr. I mean, Chair, if I can. I think the problem yeah. has been the fact that even when it was being distributed, very few people actually ever answered it. They just didn't feel like, mm -hmm. you know, well, we don't have any issues, so they just don't answer it. Yeah. Who do you mean people? The, the boards that are on there? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. The department heads. Mr. That, that's not true, Bob. That's not true. I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying that there are there there have been a in the past there have been a portion of people who were on that list who didn't answer anything. They didn't they didn't even say, well, we have no issues for, for with this. I mean the the, the form I'm that not we directing have... it at anybody in particular. Right. The form that we have, Mr. Chair, is good. We just need to have them fill it out before they come to the planning board to even start their process. That's okay. the part of the application. So the, so if I hear you correctly, Larry, you would be recommending that that page four must be filled out, essentially, the different department heads that have had to reply before we we'll accept an application? Correct, because I don't want to go over with all the discussions mm -hmm. that are going on in town, but that form yeah. would have saved us a lot of aggravation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jed, is there any issue with uh, requiring that before we take an application? I would suggest that you talk with your town council. Okay. Mr. Jim, Chair. Jim, you have something to say, please. Actually, I have a couple of things. First of all, last year... Um, Mr. Hamill did the research and worked with the New Hampshire Municipal Association. The planning board can, is actually precluded by law from requiring prior approvals to accepting an application. Mm -hmm. We have to take the application, which is why I started roughly 16 months ago. When an application comes in, either the day it comes in or the following day I'm in the office. That application is put on the website and every department head in the town gets an email saying, this application has been posted on the website. Please review it. If you have any issues, please send me an email for inclusion with the application. Mm -hmm. Since that, on that could I, before you move on, Jim, I have a yeah. question. So that's fine. You're letting the department heads know that this company's coming in. The department heads are looking for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the new owner. So you get more information out of that owner instead of just saying, 
Okay, this company's coming in. I'm not knowing what they're doing. If, well, the board, if the board wishes, I can put it before before our land use council. And Jim, I'm not saying don't accept the application, make it part of the application before we vote on anything for the business. Well, we have, okay, there's, a, there's some legalities that we have to straighten out to make sure where that line is. There's definitely, I believe, a... Uh, a communication issue between the planning board and some of the department heads and myself um i would like to as a as the new chair uh reach out and have some conversations with the different department heads because what might be an issue i see what you're doing jim with sending in this and saying comment that may not be the thing that works best for them and with larry's input that we actually need to somehow encourage the applicants to meet with these different departments. Um, so I would suggest maybe we, we think about this and, and then um, Larry, if you have some actual ideas you know, to bring forward to the next meeting and then Jim, if we can put at least a discussion about this on the agenda, um, and if anybody has any ideas between now and now, then please uh, reach out to, uh, to Jim or, or to me, I guess, too. Well, I'd like to suggest also that you as chair um, talk to our Diane Garo, our council, and see mm -hmm. what um, legally we can and can't do and what recommendations she might have. Um, I also, I also would like to, while you're doing that, to have you revisit the idea of having an applicant, when they make an application, grant access for conformant to check um, conform. Um, when, what am I trying to say? To check whether they are conforming to um, the conditional uses that we, the conditional uh, requests that we've put on there. How many applications is the applicant required to file with the town? Depends on the project. But potentially Major fire, site plan building, site plan, driveway. Septic. That's yeah, state. No, yeah, okay. That's, I was like in the entire packet. So each department head has a hard copy available. Paid for by the applicant. Not at this uh, time. E e each no. applicant receives. I'm so just it's enough it. for, for, for the planning board members. We we would have to increase the number required in our regulations in order to give all department heads a copy. I'm not saying it's a perfect solution. It's what I see regularly in other communities. Portsmouth requires, I think it's 17 copies. Oh, wow. Um, we presently require 15. Okay. So there's quite a few going around. Mr. Chair, I had a have a question. Yes, please. Um, maybe the maybe the uh, our land use attorney could um, let us know whether something on the order of the applicant gets when the applicant wants calls and says they would like to do put in an application for whatever that they're giving, given that form first, page four, and told to go to the different departments and talk to them and explain to them what they wanna do and get some sort of a letter or to have them write on there. And then they can come back to the planning board office and get an application and fill it out. I don't know if that, that would work if it's allowed to be able to do it that way. Mm. I like the opening up the lines of communication my hesitancy is that the the verbal communication is one thing, but then what somebody says and then what they put down on their plan may be different. So we're going to have to have, say, the fire chief. the The first conversation is great, but they would have to actually see what the actual plan that's submitted, project submitted. But in your point, if the once it communication has started and established it's probably going to be much easier to continue that communication mm -hmm. so that might be something if 
again, if that can be a requirement or a suggestion, but I think okay. there's a lot to, to uh, look at here. And okay, I can give a quick example so the rest of the board can understand the new members. Okay. So the, the gentleman, and I forget his name, I apologize, who, who leased the uh, old hardware store by the 108 General Store, came mm -hmm. to the planning board and he got the application approved. We did a site walk, courtesy site walk, me and the fire chief, after he had paid all his money and signed a lease with the owner and found out that that building didn't have no fire alarm system. So mm -hmm. it cost him 20 grand, which he wasn't happy. So if this gentleman came to us before for the courtesy walk, we would have said, okay, before you lease it, before you buy it, you need a $20,000 fire alarm system. That's all we're trying to get to. So the fire department and fire chief doesn't look like the bad guy all the time. And we straighten it out uh -huh. on, on the original application of what you need. And it goes the same with the old fire station while we're in litigation now. Because mm -hmm. that building didn't get an inspection, and that owner didn't talk to the fire chief. That's all we're trying to correct. That's all. Yeah, um, yeah. There's some there's some legal things that we can uh, do and and can't do, and I I can't answer them right now. I don't know them all. Um, I know we like to emphasize that somebody has to comply with all permits and etc. And no matter how much we stomp our feet, it doesn't mean that they got to do it. And I agree with you, Larry, it'd be nice to help them out. Um, we're bo both those cases are a case of buyer beware where they should have done their due diligence and they didn't. Um, does it make the fire chief feel bad? Yeah, because, you know, and the, the lawsuit against the town, you know, that's that's going nowhere. Right, but, they, but they're pitting the, the fire department against the planning board saying, well, the planning board never told me that. They never brought that up. But we do. We always have. No, you, you, we tell them that they have to abide by all laws and permits and all that. Mm -hmm. The average kid doesn't know what that is, though, what they need. I remember one member of the planning board asking whether um, about a, a spray booth for mm -hmm. the fire station. I remember that conversation going on in the planning board meeting. And, um, you know, it, the applicant just chose to ignore it yeah right. he's not he's not my he's like 10 percent on the scale of concern yeah. it was the other guy i felt bad for the guy who bought the hardware store yeah well we'll look into this uh we'll have it on the agenda next week and then um larry you bring suggestions anybody else and i will try to reach out um i'm not sure what the protocol is yet reaching out to our new land use attorney but i'll work with uh I'll talk to Jim about that. Excuse me, Mike, can yeah. I just make one thing? Um, Please. I'm wondering if, you know how on the conditional approval, we all say that they have to meet all requirements and town permits and whatever. Mm -hmm. why, why do we have to lump the fire department in with that? Why can't we just list that separately and say, you will have to go and meet with the fire department to see if there are any things that he needs you to do? I Before think that's, you continue. yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. I think in maybe in the past or before I got here, we were trying to simplify because if you went through every possible permit required, but I think recent history is telling us that particularly with the fire chief, that's where these, the communication is falling apart. So right. I think your suggestion of somehow laying it right out there, even clearer that you must speak with the fire chief um, about likely cost, you know, I don't know how you want to put it. Now we get through to some of right. these chiefs, but you know, know, possibly to improve. Find out if there, yeah, to find out if there are any renovations that are necessary before you can conduct your business. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. You know? Yes. Um, only because you're going to get to sign them starting mm -hmm. on Thursday. <laughs> If you remember uh, about four or five months ago, I did all the cover letters that now go out with notices of decision, mm -hmm. stating that the notice of decision is simply a land use per acceptability, and that your next step in most cases is always, almost always to the building inspector, but it's usually written building inspector and or fire chief. 
So yeah. they they know that they have to, that's their next stop. Mm -hmm. For how Can long you? has that been used? Uh, I've been I've been using that since I brought them forward last October or November. Okay. Jim, could you, you, you probably ran a booth by the board back then, but could yeah. you um, include a copy of what you're currently sending out in our sure. next uh, board packet? Sure. And then um, that may give us some ideas also. And okay. I, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. When you, from my experience, when you start including specific permits and not say all applicable permits, mm -hmm. then you potentially own more of, yes. yeah. you didn't say, you said no spray booth, but you didn't say a fire alarm. Why didn't you say fire alarm? And it's outside of our purview and jurisdiction of building codes. Mm -hmm. in general that's why we use life safety codes dennis that, that's what they usually tell them yeah that's and that's uh, covered under all applicable codes and that's a good reason to talk to our attorney that would be my they would provide the best language for the town to right. use yeah, yeah. The board. and okay. i have one more thing before we i have one more thing before okay, we Barbara. leave i know everybody wants yeah. to go but i think too that the board needs to make a uh Mo a motion and a, and a vote that in the event that the chair is not available to sign certain things that the vice chair is able to do that and it has to be on a vote of the board sure is that is that uh is that something we normally do yes okay i believe you I can ask, you can ask jim that i think he had that on the back of one of these one of the forms that we got that that's a, a normal thing that we, you know, it has to, the board has to vote that that's, that the vice chair can vote in place of the chair if the chair is unavailable. Is that yeah. right, my, uh, Jim? The vice chair can sign documents in place of the chair. Right, they, right. Bob, is yeah. that your motion? I'll second it. Yes, <laughs> that's my okay. motion. I have a motion and a second. That makes sense. All the other boards and nonprofits I've ever been on, you always had, you know, two people that could sign. So, uh, right. Thank you for that, Barbara and uh, Jim. Call the. Uh, the you uh, Mr. Andrews. Aye. Mr. Lavoy. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Foot. Aye. Mr. Morin. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Zelensky. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay, thank you. And before you guys, uh, I keep you too late and you fire me. Uh, I think that's probably enough business for tonight. Uh, Barbara, please give our best, give my best to Jim. Thank and you. Look forward to seeing him at a future meeting soon. And okay. if Thanks. does anybody else have any? Uh, thing they must say before we close the meeting. Good night. Chair can declare <laughs> no. the meeting adjourned. I declare the meeting adjourned at um 1015. 1015. Okay. Thank you everybody. I appreciate you. all your support. Help you. you through the uh, first meeting and uh, we'll see you next time. Mike look <laughs> in your chat. Okay. Okay. Just you, usually the, the I try to get the chair to call for a couple of minutes after the meeting just so we can coordinate times to. Oh, okay. Here, I'll kick mom out and we can do it here. <laughs> oh, I see. But you um, can tell if anybody is on, so do it here. Yeah. Um, just so you know, there. Uh, Thursday, by the close of day, I have to have the notices of decision out. So okay. I will be typing them up first thing when I get in on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, are you available someplace around 2.30, 3 o'clock? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let me uh, check my calendar. Thursday, that's the 25th. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So I, I assume it's a, in an in-person thing. 